Hi there, everyone. We have another special guest for you today. This is Rohan Francis. He's a cardiologist, he's a doctor, but he's also like a, a medical influencer. He makes YouTube videos and stuff like that. We'll put a link down in the description so you can watch what he does. He's really interested in medical history. So I said, you've got to come to the Royal Society. You've got to meet Keith Moore, head of the library. We've got to get you some stuff out of the archives to look at. And that's what we've got here today. Are you excited? Very excited. As you said, I've got a real interest in medical history and love kind of looking at how my predecessors were figuring things out and, and learning all the things that we take for granted today. I'm excited because at last we have an expert instead of two idiots on objectivity. <laughs> You've had lots of experts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for not saying we're idiots. <laughs> what have we got first? We have a volume of the Royal Society's early letters, so D authors, occasionally in letters sent to the Royal Society in the 17th and 18th century. There were little enclosures, things that the, the scientists or the doctors wanted the Royal Society to see. And in this one, there's, there's something rather unusual that has a, a bit of a medical background. So we have a letter here. It's uh, 22nd of July, 1669. This is red in front of the Royal Society, in front of the fellows. It isn't just red, but it has an illustration as well. So this doctor, William Durston, he's in Plymouth in 1669. He has a patient and you can see here she is. She's in, in period dress, but she's exposing her breast because that's the thing that he wants the Royal Society to think about. She clearly has a problem and it does have dimensions uh, written down the side, so anatomical measurements. But he, he also so, as a kind of an extra, includes a packet of tapes. And these tapes will give you the exact dimensions uh, of this poor woman's medical condition. So here we are, original linen tapes. And you can see the length of the right, and presumably that's the right breast. Yeah. So he's taking a measure of that. Can we see from the letter how this happened or what was wrong? Or Yeah, so he's writing to the president of the Royal Society, Viscount Brunke. It says, Elizabeth Travers, aged 23 or 24. So this is a patient, fair of complexion, brown head, of a healthy constitution, small of stature, of honest repute, but of poor and mean parentage near this town, was on Friday, July the 3rd in good health and went to bed where she took quiet rest and sleep as ever before. But the morning when she did awake, attempting to turn in her bed, she was not able to. And seeing her breast so swelled, she was affrighted to an astonishment. The thing that's interesting for a sudden development is it's bilateral, it's affecting both breasts. So, you know, you often will get sudden swelling, you know, she's of childbearing age. So if she was lactating, you may get a, a blocked duct or and, and you can get sudden you know, engorgement, but typically affects one side, or you may get hyperplasia or, or, or some sort of tum tumor, but affecting both sides is surprising. And it apparently happened overnight. I'd be a little stumped as to what might, might have caused sudden bilateral swelling like that. No. So you're saying partly by the lymph ducts, yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. chylus refers to lymph. Mm. So that might suggest that it was, was bilateral lymph drainage problem. And this is, this is lymph liquid that has accumulated very quickly. Yeah. And it typically, you'll see that in the, in the chest cavity. So you'll get an, uh, an effusion, a collection of fluid inside the chest cavity and squash the lung. But I guess it could occur in the breast as well. Maybe that's mm -hmm. the cause. What do you think about this, Rowan, the idea of sending in a tape? I didn't know that they did that, but um, it looks like it would be very long. So, you know, we won't unravel it, but um, yeah, it really conveys how large this poor young woman's breasts were. This wasn't the only time that this chap sent in tapes, though. No, no, no. I did say it was a tape collection, Brady. Yeah. No, didn't I? Here we have the tapes belonging to letter 15. He's at it again. William Durston. What have we got this time? A narrative of a prodigious birth in Plymouth, October the 22nd, 1670, with anatomical observations taken thereupon. It begins, one Grace Bestard, the wife of a shoemaker of honest repute. They're, they're, everyone seems to be of honest repute at this period, don't they? Do you always check on the repute of your patients before? Well, I, I don't tend to refer to them as bastards um, either, really? so... <laughs> That's a name rather than a oh, kind okay, of condition okay. of the, <laughs> in this case. Uh, and mother of five children, now come to the full time of a sixth birth, was at about 12 o'clock in the night uh, began to have travelling pains. And uh, it's at four o'clock in the morning, the head of a child came to the birth. Oh, then the midwife, putting her hand to hold off this, felt another 
alive by its heat and motion. And the twins being joined, so this mm. is a co-joined birth, so presumably exceedingly difficult. Yeah, I mean, mortality of conjoined twins and mothers in, in those days would have been yeah. almost universal, I yeah. think. Uh, and again, we have um, tapes. In this case, the measurement is the length of the infants. So the, he's taken a, a measurement of that. So this is a detailed drawing of, yeah. of the intest intestine up to the anus, yeah? Wow. Yes, yeah, so it says here the colic gut. I mean, we've only just you know, made surgery for separating complex conjoined twins safe in the last few years, and, and still there are cases which are very, very challenging or too, too dangerous. So you can imagine in these days they would have just been completely yeah. daunted by this. And we have a third type. Indeed, yeah. So this is attached to letter 16 here. This is slightly different because this is coming from someone else, I think. But the tapes themselves, again, seem to relate to that first case. I can only assume that this may be possibly a post-mortem if, mm. if the, the case was, was fatal. One thing I am learning is back in those days, if a doctor walked in with a piece of tape, something's gone wrong. Yeah. So this is uh, a classified set of material sent to the Royal Society. They tend to be longer papers. These ones are on anatomical topics. And occasionally you will get other materials in here, usually drawings. Oh, here's his, uh, ah, it's a little um, fungus by the look of it, is it? Yeah. You could make a million videos about all the stuff in here, Rowan. Oh, I'd love it. Yeah. I would love it, yeah. That, Any guesses? Cirrhotic liver, that looks mm, like. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly looks a diseased one, doesn't it? Yes. It's hard to tell the scale because there's no tape in here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's a striking image. What have we got here? It mm. says, a bony substance found in the womb of a woman aged 57 years. Wow, okay. What might that be? Well, I, I mean, I guess within the womb you can get sort of desmoid cysts, which are essentially tumors where the wrong DNA gets activated. So classically, you'll find teeth and hair in a tumor within the, the womb. So this is quite a common finding. But I guess, you know, it could ossify and you could, you could get some bone or it was maybe a, a, another kind of tumour which has just been very slow growing and, and, and calcified and become hard and bony. I'm kind of full of admiration for a lot of these uh, early um, doctors because, you know, they, they were really figuring this stuff out for the first time and a lot of these, this kind of era in particular, they didn't really have any effective therapies for the majority of things. So really all they had left is just, just to describe what they're seeing as, as, as best they could to just further the, the collected body of knowledge. And yes, obviously the doctors then wouldn't have the knowledge that we have today of all the different drugs available to us and, and how the you know, um, diseases are caused, pathogens. But what they did know, they knew superbly well. I mean, their anatomical knowledge would probably put most of us to shame. Keith, from an archival perspective, mm. I'm imagining you don't get a lot of modern doctors, people like Rogan coming along saying, can I, can I look through these papers because I want to try and understand something medically? It is interesting, though, that quite a few doctors, when they retire, get interested mm. in medical history. I have seen that, yeah. yeah and, and, and they do begin to take an interest in, in some of these topics. So, yeah, we, we, we get a few physicians. In. Can you see yourself in 30, 40 years sitting in the reading room downstairs and just leafing through these? Oh, yeah. I mean, I do that now. And, and I'm also quite happy to retire now as well. Uh, so, so on both counts, I'm, I'm ahead of the game there, I think. This is one of my kind of favourite anatomical Books and because Brady is yeah, enamoured is of pictures particularly, we thought we'd get this one out, which is the uh, anatomy of the head. It's a French volume, but it's special because it is full colour, Brady, and I, I know you're going to enjoy wow. this. 1748. Yeah, so it's nice and early. Anatomy de la tête, un tableau imprimé. Very nice. Anatomy of the head, yeah. Anatomy of the head, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. that. That's amazing. It's strange to see with, you know, with the skin and eyes still on. So, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Wow, going deeper now. Wow. So th these are the dark ones, the, the venous drainage, so the veins, the jugular, external, internal. And then uh, you've got your carotid and vertebral arteries there. And then obviously you can see some muscles of the, of the face as well, trachea. Hmm. Okay, so this is looking at the skull vault with the brain removed. And this would be just part of something called the circle of Willis, which is a kind of unique vascular structure in the head that kind of protects 
the brain because there's sort of redundancy in the system, so it's a ring which doesn't really exist anywhere else. This is the um, membrane dividing the ventricles, I, I think, the falx cerebri. Not bad for a heart expert pulling out all this... Uh... Uh, this is all very rusty, this is uh, yeah. 15 years ago. That looks like an MRI scan, I've got a picture of my head that looks like that. Well I hope it doesn't quite look <laughs> like that. No? But, um... <laughs> I'm going to ask if they found the brain, but... <laughs> <laughs> So again, you're seeing the brain stem, this is the cerebellum, this kind of tree-like structure. And then this is the, this is the brain stem there, spinal cord. Gosh. Rohin, what's the modern equivalent of this? Typically these days, most medical schools will, will use prosection, so you're not actually doing that much dissection. But um, the equivalent of this book, I guess now, is, is all electronic, you know, and, and, and very sophisticated, you can do sort of fly-throughs of the human body and, and divide it up and, and sort of take any section you want. But essentially, when, you know, when I went to medical school, we had this kind of thing, just atlases of the human body with these similar kinds, but a lot less arty, which is a, a bit of a shame, because I think this, this has got a certain, you know, you don't see pictures like this anymore. One other thing is you wouldn't see these kinds of sections, like it's more just a axial section, you know, just cut in a conventional way, whereas the, some of these are quite unique, like they've just decided to take an oblique look through the body just because it looked nice, whereas I think we don't see that much anymore. And obviously I've, I've seen um, historical kinds of illustrations before, but uh, seeing it in, in the flesh, so to speak, um, is, is really something. Well, thanks for coming along. Maybe we'll take you downstairs and show you even more stuff later on. I look forward to it. All right. Plenty more where that came from. Do you think Keith's delivered the goods? Of course he has. Let's have a look at a bunch of stuff here, all around the theme of hearts. And we're going to start with the story, it sounds rather unusual, of the blue boy. Okay, here we go. We've got 1817 to 1821, papers from the archives. 